Good afternoon. My name is Eli. Can you please tell me your name? Yes, my full name is Grace Joy Perino. Okay. Hi, Eli. Hello, Grace. How are you? <laughs> So, Grace, in this first part, I'm going to ask you some questions about yourself. Um, let's talk about what you do. Do you work or are you a student? I'm currently working. I'm a producer for a specific channel here in Qatar, in the state of Qatar. And I've been with my company for about 10 years now. And uh, what do you like most about your job I would say I enjoy um, the whole process of producing innovative new videos for the channel. We always have to come up with new ideas and new graphical work to showcase uh, anything that's uh, developing here in the country. And I work with some pretty cool and creative people. So we always manage somehow to uh, come up with exciting projects. Um, are there any other industries that you would like to work in? Wow. Well, I never thought about that because I've been focused. I've been in the industries for about 15 years now, 15 to 16 years. If I had to try another, I, I'd like to give a shot on being a teacher. I'd like to teach my craft or later on teach uh, some maybe high school students. Uh, about uh, maybe with English, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. And let's move on. Let's talk about um, paintings. Do you spend much time looking at paintings? I remember when I was younger, yes. I would spend a lot, a great deal of time looking at paintings. I, I, I would say I practiced a little bit when I was back in high school. I, I like playing with colors and so that's when I got uh, interested or intrigued with a couple of paintings but these days uh, no unfortunately not. <laughs> are there any paintings that are special to you? Paintings there was one that was gifted to me by my best friend he gave me that uh, painting uh, when I was when I turned 18 and it was uh, I think it reflected my my personality because it was a simple lady uh, staring at the beach and it was uh, like a sunset. And I think uh, he kind of knew uh, what was my taste in paintings. Something that makes me forget about uh, many, many things in my mind and just focus on uh, the waters because I enjoy being in the beach. So it, this painting would remind me of a nice holiday or a peaceful time by the beach. Why do you think people can feel strong emotions when looking at paintings? Hmm. I would have to say because we have a lot of memories that we could associate when we see a certain painting or a, a certain picture. So it could evoke uh, it, it could evoke uh, this particular painting could evoke uh, emotions and uh, sort of like uh, reminiscent of something that maybe made you happy or maybe something that made you a little bit sad or it reminds you of your childhood. Mm -hmm. So I think I think uh, especially during. Uh, especially in the past when there was less of the, uh, the gadgets. So we would really look into paintings and see, and we would uh, uh, appreciate uh, even like paintings of landscapes or nature or something related to even people. I feel like, yeah, it's it kind of gives us the sense of being in touch with our inner self. And let's move on. Let's talk about um, days of the week. Do you have a favorite day of the week? That would be Sunday. Yes, Sunday is my favorite day of the week. Wow. <laughs> uh, I would say because I associate it with family time. I'm having, uh, I live in Qatar alone and my family is back in the Philippines and some are in Australia, some are in Canada. So we'd always make sure to... Uh, find time uh, through video calls, catching up with each other, um, having like 
long distance dates, you would say. And also that would be the day that I go to church. So I get to see some of my Filipi- Filipino friends and uh, you, you would say uh, buddies. <laughs> so we have a great deal of uh, time just laughing and doing things that we like to do at home or maybe outside. Do you like to have a similar routine every day of the week? Um, honestly, no. I am, uh, although I am a creature of habit, and I I do prefer to have a particular schedule with with at at work. But uh, I would say I like to have a variety of. Uh, things that I could do if I had my free time. If if outside work, I'd like to do, uh, maybe I'd like to watch a movie this day. Or if I had uh, more time, I'd go out of the city and visit another friend from another place. Or I'd go uh, for uh, going to a new uh, exploring a new restaurant. So I like to change it up a bit every day, not really doing the same things all the time, if time permits. Okay, now Grace, in this next part, I'm going to give you a topic and I'd like you to talk about it for one to two minutes. Now, before you talk, you'll have one minute to think about what you're going to say and you can make some notes if you wish. Do you understand? Yes, I do. Okay, so here's your topic. Can you see that? Yes. Okay, so you'll have one minute to prepare. All right, so remember you have one to two minutes for this, so don't worry if I stop you. I'll tell you when the time is up. Can you start speaking now, please? Yes. So today I'd like to talk about my good friend, Alex. I have known him for about 11 years now. His full name is Alex, and he's known to the 3D world as Ghost. 3D. He's quite famous in the three um, among the 3D designers of the world. He has a lot of following on Instagram. So, uh, just a little bit of background. I I met him back when we were just. <laughs> I, I think we were still in our twenties, and we were uh, we were just starting out. He was still a, a rookie 3D artist, and I was still uh, you would say a budding producer and I was trying out a couple of things but because we were going through uh, similar projects and we had to collaborate for a few videos so we got to know each other better I never thought that I could be close to uh, uh, like from the opposite sex um, just as friendly as we could be Uh, one of the few things that we have that I have experienced with this um, uh, person is that he is uh, good at his job, he's talented, conscientious, and he makes it to a point to encourage everyone, not just me, at work. So uh, on special days like my birthday, and he wanted me to uh, uh, sort of like make healthier choices, so he baked me a salmon cake. I never I never imagined that a guy friend of mine would bake me something so healthy and it's a cake and it was delicious it was it uh it was really unique and uh I will never forget that so I would say that um through time he taught me a couple of other things uh, as a producer I'm not really tasked to do technical work but because sometimes to ease the load on some of my teammates. So he taught me a couple of things. Thank you. Do you think you will continue to be friends for a long time? Sure. I I absolutely would love to be his friend for a very long time. Thank you. Okay, let's move on now to part three. And in part three, I'm going to ask you some more general questions related to, to the same theme. So let's first of all consider types of friends. Um, Mm -hmm. Do you think it's similar to have um, lots of friends and then to have just a few very close close friends? Well, I would say that depending on each person's personality, other people would 
love to or they can maintain a lot of friends like um they would have a lot of social groups they would ha- make easily make friends at work or in their school or in their even with neighbors but some people yes for for some people like uh, i would say i'm one of them uh we're a little bit on the introvert and it takes us some time to get to know someone and um we we sort of like we don't open up easily so it takes it takes uh, a lot of experiences together or maybe doing things together doing activities together for us to be closer for people to be closer and to actually call them as a real friend mm-hmm. because there are acquaintances and there are friends mm-hmm. and what would you say is the difference between acquaintances and friends well acquaintances uh maybe you could be uh talking to them uh because you have you have work and you don't really talk about personal stuff but uh like real friends uh in like for example Alex when i was going through a tough time he was really there for me and he really took action and uh somehow it proved to me that yes this is uh this is what a real friend does there's acts of service there's uh, uh there's a lot of uh you would say time and effort to maintain the closeness and to even grow with each other even as professionals or as friends uh i think it's a uh, it's really there's a big difference between acquaintances and real friends mm. and and you mentioned that um you can also have friends at work do you think it's essential for people who work together to be friends Hmm. I wouldn't say it's essential but it would make it uh, it would make the work uh you would say fun or you it would make the work um a little bit more the the whole situation when it's really stressful it could be harmonious with uh, if you're uh getting along with each other and you're you're friendly with each other and you respect each other so I think it good uh people would even go the extra mile if they knew that you know we're doing this together and we have the sense of teamwork and we're also friends. So yeah, I think it it's uh, beneficial for for the projects if you could be friendly and not just, you know, a little bit stiff or just, you know, business only <laughs> with mm-hmm. with the people that you work with, right? Exactly. Um what kind of uh difficulties can put strain on a friendship wow that is a tough one but if uh certain situations force or or let us have uh you would say there's a certain situation and you both have different opinions or different uh takes on that particular situation and you might disagree and in the process of disagreeing you, you sort of like exchange some hurtful words to each other or uh one another person catches a lie of the other person i think th- those little details sort of get in the way of, of uh, friendship and it happened also recently with uh, our with our team uh we we were really trying to uh, fight for one of our teammates and one of our teammates was like no he deserves uh he deserved this punishment and it was causing a lot of uh, friction between between uh, friends and colleagues so so what, yeah, I think, what kind of so, advice would you give to somebody for maintaining harmonious relationships with their friends wow i guess uh one of the practical tips i would say is if you really i i i do this for i do this with my day to day relationships i won't say the first thing that i thought of i i would hold it back a little bit and if i'm getting emotional which most likely i will be when you know in the heat of the moment uh i i'd st- i take a step back and maybe i i will i'll leave the room first i'll i'll not i'll do the 
uh, distancing, uh, uh, sort of like distance myself first and let me think, let me process how I actually feel and think about the situation. And I'd, I'd phrase my, uh, when, when the time has come for me to talk to this person that I disagree with, or maybe even if this person used to be my friend, uh, I would uh, phrase it in a more polite way, <laughs> in a respectful way. We, even when we're angry, we should try not to deliberately hurt each other with mean words or nasty phrases <laughs> or whatever comes to our mind immediately. Well, thank you very much. That is the end of the speaking test. So thank how, you, Ellie. Thank you. So how, how did it feel? Ah, it was nerve-wracking as usual, but I like this topic uh, about friendship, though I never tested it. Uh, I never had this experience uh, being asked these questions before. Yeah, but there were very good considerations that you had about maintaining friendship and how it changes in a work environment, in a friendly environment, and what it means to be true friends. I was, I was really yeah. enjoying listening to your ideas there. Thank you. Thank you so much. And this is invaluable. I really appreciate your time. And, you know, uh, I feel less stressed thinking about my speaking test so I can focus more on my writing, you could say. Yeah. Uh, I hope I hope the, the questions on Saturday will be at, I wouldn't say they're easy, but it's a topic that I'm comfortable with. Right. Mm. Uh, but if it's a topic like. I remember there was a topic, a cue card about buildings. Ooh, that wow. is one of my weaknesses. And it is, it's not that it's, it's more that buildings is slightly kind of boring to talk about. It's not necessarily difficult <laughs> to talk about, but it's like boring, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. Or there was a, a cue card that I remember I struggled with this question. I did a mock test with the British Council over the phone about four months ago. And they asked me, what is your most uh, if there was something that is most important to you, what is this thing? And you have to talk about it for two minutes. Honestly, I didn't, uh, my most valuable thing is something that my uh, deceased mother owned. So it's a, it's a piece of jewelry, but I didn't want to talk so, about something. Uh, a little yeah. bit, I would say well, negative. Yeah, it's too personal. Right. So I had to say, I had to invent an answer, which is my laptop, but, <laughs> no. Yeah. <laughs> because you yeah. can talk about your laptop for two minutes. Well, that is true. But sometimes when you invent something, it becomes harder to talk about for a longer period of time yeah. because you're you're constantly yeah. having to make up new lies. Whereas, yes. you know, even if it is personal, talking about some jewelry from your deceased mother might actually be slightly easier just because you've got so much yeah. that you can talk about in that case. Um, yeah. Even though it's personal, it. If you do get a question like that, I would just go for the first thing that you think about in the exam. Really? I think so, yeah. I mean, I, th I think that kind of real communication is quite nice in the exam. Right. And, um, and it doesn't really matter what you say in the exam because the examiner is going to forget about it in 15 minutes when, they, when the next candidate comes true. in. So Very true. Yeah. Um, now, what did you get when you did the mock test with the British Council out of interest? I got a 7.5 to 8.5 because they won't give you the real, uh, um, you would say, band, but they would give you an approximate if you you are around this. So, my yes, my listening and my reading was about 8, 8 to 8.5. Hmm. And my... Uh, basically my lowest was uh, speaking because I was really nervous and they yeah they they asked me about my hometown this is a difficult question for someone who moved around all her life so it was I did I never thought that they would ask me that question immediately like on the first try and I was not prepared at all this was for like four months ago now I've been trying to uh, do some uh, mock tests with my friends and because like my friends exam is tomorrow and mine is on Saturday Day. so we try to practice with each other <laughs> and, and do you do one person is the candidate the other person is the examiner uh no uh because uh they they recognize also that uh i my level is a bit advanced than them we're not in the same band so i would be the examiner all the time <laughs> right okay right right which is kind of good preparation for you as well because you get to kind of start to think like an examiner right a little bit yes 
I would really be sweating but, but uh, during my first uh, tries of mock tests, like speaking with anyone, uh, any native speaker, I would be so nervous. But now, yeah, I can, I know the tricks. And maybe if you noticed, uh, I didn't make my mistakes a lot. Like I would, I would correct them and I wouldn't speak as fast because I remember that was one of my anxious signs. Uh, I would speak so fast and they would be like, uh, I think you are stumbling on your own words if you speak that fast. So I tried to tone it better. Uh, well, I, I thought it was great. I, I like the way that your, your, the speed of your voice varies. So when you do get a bit excited, it starts to go a bit faster. <laughs> and then at other points, when you're trying to emphasize something, you go a bit slower, which I like. And I, I think it, you know, that's a, that's a good point for pronunciation as well, is that you can vary your the speed and the tone of your voice to better communicate your message. Um, I'm very intrigued. On, huh? You were very? I'm very intrigued to find out what, um, what school you get on Saturday. You said you've got your yeah. test on Saturday, right? Yes, it's a computer-based test. So most likely I'll get the results like around five to seven days after. Well, definitely send me a message um, and tell me what yeah. you've got. So, I mean, I, I was so impressed um, by this speaking test. Um, your pronunciation, as far as I'm concerned, is band nine for sure. Oh. Your fluency as well, band nine as well. Um, and what I actually, you know, at the very beginning of the test, I found myself trying to write down all the good vocabulary you, you used, but I realized I just couldn't keep up. So instead, what I tried to do um, is, is to focus on maybe some tiny mistakes that you make, um, true, true. just kind of little things that um, I might be able to draw your attention to. And, uh, okay. and one was uh, reported speech. Um, uh -huh. So you, you said about your friend, um, he knew what was my taste in paintings or something along the lines. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it would probably be like, he knew what my taste in paintings was. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's good. So, yeah, we often, we change the sentence structure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. away from being a question. Um, oh, and then another small mistake, you said kind of less of the gadgets. You'd probably just say fewer gadgets. So between. Ah, kind of true. One yeah. See, I didn't catch that. Yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, sure. that, yeah. that's a mistake that many, many, many native speakers make. And so that's not going to lower your score, even from band nine to band eight. But it's just something to be um, aware of. True. Um, I, I really liked your part, too. I thought it was very well organized. It was kind of like the nice little introduction about your friend, um, who he was, and then a bit more about your personal relationship. And then I was a bit worried that you were going to run out of things to say, but I liked um, that you had like a new topic, which was what he taught you, which you used yeah. when you, when you kind of came to an end of talking about him, which was very clever. Oh, thank you. I watch all your videos. Come on. I should learn from one of the best, you and Keith. <laughs> right. Great. Well, I love, I love that kind of stuff, you know, telling a story and then, having something yeah. else that you can kind of go into at the end, like talking about the future or talking about a lesson that you learned from this experience. That, that's great because it opens up a whole new kind of area to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I thought so. And I thought that that's, that's the reason why he he's like among, I have two other friends who I became really close with, like a friend who I, it's our friendship is about 12 years now, but we're doing long distance and she didn't really teach me anything but this with my friend I there was a lot of other things that I wanted to touch like he he started as a graphic designer and he became even uh, better as um, uh, you would say a drone operator so he added skills and that's that's what pushed me to add more skills as well and uh, he's now married and with a child and I'm I feel like I'm an auntie to his uh, to his daughter you know so there was still a lot of things that's the that's the reason why when he when this I read the question I said for sure it's going to be Alex that I'm going to talk about because there's just so many things that that can be said about uh, uh said about him yeah yeah well, so many <laughs> things that I can say about him I can say about him yeah. yeah um so what you did there was I noticed 
um, and, and I'd be quite conscious of this, it seems like sometimes when you've got a lot of things that you want to communicate, you almost try to communicate a lot of those things almost at the same time. So you start <laughs> developing one idea and then you, when you go, okay, actually I want to talk about this. And then instead of fully developing that, you, you move on to the next subject. Yeah. So, yeah. so just be conscious of that as something that might yeah. lower your fluency and coherence score. And you didn't do that yeah, during yeah. the test, but it was only actually just then that I noticed yeah, that, yeah. that might potentially be problematic. That can be problematic. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yeah, you were saying? Well, I'm saying this is a very minute detail and this, is, this yeah. might stop you from getting band nine. Okay, because mm -hmm. I, I really think you're capable of an unbelievable score in this IELTS speaking test. <laughs> oh, thank you for the encouragement. It means the world to me, truly. Um, I, 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 I was watching a lot of videos that, you know, there's a lot of material and videos out there about uh, taking, a, sort of like teaching people about like IELTS and the tricks and the magic and, and all these tips. But I, I never... I, I, I really focused on your videos and Mr. Keith's videos. Mm. I, I, was say, I was about to say I, was, I never found anyone like your style or I don't know how to say it, actually. I'll find, I find, I'll find a better way of describing it. Yeah, I maybe, tested many, you know. Maybe, for example, the, the content in my videos and Keith's videos resonated with you. Yeah. Well, resonated best with me yeah <laughs> <laughs> um now one another piece of advice before i forget is um in part three and we mentioned this you you are really going to be put to the test in part three because you're you're so clearly above band seven and the examiner is going to want to find out just what score you are um capable <laughs> so you're going to get the difficult questions in part three unfortunately um and one thing that could lower your score is if you focused a little bit too much on personal details. Ooh. And, um, mm -hmm. and an, an, what will happen is an experienced examiner might interrupt you. So for example, at one point you were talking about your team um, and um, in terms of friendship and how you gelled as a team. Now, um, you know, at, at that point you were kind of talking about your team maybe a little bit too much and not mm -hmm. the kind of general principles of, of what that means for society. Um, right. Now, two things might happen. Either the examiner might ask you a question to try and encourage you to talk more broadly, or mm -hmm. the examiner might interrupt you and move on to another question. Um, don't get flustered if that happens. Okay. I'll try not to. Yes, <laughs> good. and that's a good and that's a good tip. I'll I'll think of uh, I'll be more conscious, especially on part three, not to focus on yeah the the personal experience because I I do note that those are for part one and part two, mm. um, the the tasks for that for talking about personal experiences. But mm. yeah, for part three, general broaden broaden. Yeah, broad like you would topic. Say, yeah, broad and topic related to society, maybe, or to current events. Yeah, and, and like. your beliefs as well. And your beliefs, yeah. Your beliefs. Okay. And so what you can often do is use yourself as an example, but not the focus. Right. So, for example, right. if you're talking about work um, and friendship at work, you can say, as an example, um, at my work, we had a dispute where we had to work it out together. And I think mm -hmm. that shows that in a work environment, it can be very difficult to maintain a harmonious relationship. So mm -hmm. you use yourself as an example and you, your experience as an example, but then you immediately apply it to a broader context. True. Yeah. Thank you for the tips. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and so just um, for people watching this as well, they might be quite interested to know how you reached such a high level of English. So are there any kind of tips, tricks, or, um, or just your experience learning English throughout your life that you could kind of share with people? Yeah, I'd say, I'd say because uh, you, it's a mix of 
being interested, genuinely interested in the English language. Like I I'm I enjoy the songs in English. I, I, I enjoy listening to English songs and I enjoyed poetry when I was younger. And I read a lot of novels, Harry Potter fan. <laughs> I, I, I got them all out uh, the, the first week they, they came out. So I would be reading them. I was a bookworm. And what else? Of course, uh, watching movies, English movies, English uh, quality English films mm. that helped me, you know, like really appreciate the language. And even some, some good programs uh, nowadays are showing on Netflix or in cinema, you, you feel like you can, it's, it's interesting. The language is, there are a lot of uh, tricky rules or tricky stuff that can go on. But once you listen more and you get acquainted more with the language and you practice also with your friends and English became a universal language for most people. I, like here in Qatar, there's about 80% of expats uh, coming from all over the world, coming from different backgrounds, different cultures. So how we would uh, the the means for us to communicate would be English. So yeah. I would so say that at, at work and also in your personal life, do you communicate in English almost all the time? About seventy percent of the time, yes. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. And so has That's your good. has your English level improved a lot since moving to Qatar, or was it already a very high level when you were in the Philippines? Uh, I, I should. I should. Uh, Mention this also. Our it's it's different for for every country, but for for the Philippines, uh, to get my bachelor's degree, they thought our courses or our, our whole whole curriculum is in English. Right. So it's not like the same. It's not. I I don't think it's the same case if you go to let's say India or uh, Japan or um, other countries. So. We, uh, our teachers, our professors teach in English. So all our books, all our lessons, mostly in English. There, there will be uh, Filipino parts, but not a lot. So right. I would say about 80, 20 percent as well. So this is one of the, 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 I, I would, I should highlight this point. And you were talking about like, if I was better or uh, I got better when I came to Qatar, I would say, yes, I still got better. Uh, because you practice it every day now, and I had to write a couple of uh, huge presentations for um, my current channel. So I was forced to really um, practice the business English and also uh, try to, you know, uh, so, sort of like improve on on uh, presenting many new things and highlighting our projects and stuff like those so mm -hmm. yeah that's interesting what you're saying because often what you find is with a foreign language there's certain topics um, and themes that you feel quite comfortable talking about and communicating about and then often you move to new topics or new themes or new scenarios and yeah. even though you feel quite confident because it's a totally new thing it's quite difficult to talk about it but where in your case, because you were using English 70% of the time, you get to cover such a vast array of different topics and themes and different conversation styles. That's great. Yeah. And uh, my friends are pretty good in English as well. <laughs> they, they come from, they, they've been, they, they went to uh, universities like in Boston or in Canada or, so you would really, I, I feel like, um, even even though I learned a lot of, I studied and learned a lot of English back when I was in Philippines, I only got to see the level of native speakers when I was, uh, when I had to meet a lot of different people from all walks of life here in Qatar. And we have quite a lot. We have, for sure, from America, from Canada, from Australia. Wow, very professional, uh, great people <laughs> and you'll be moving to australia right that's the purpose of do for doing yes. the ielts exam yes <laughs> so are you excited about that yes uh, i've been 
you would say I w- I've been waiting for quite a bit to have this opportunity. Um, I was I wasn't sure if I was going to wait until the World Cup. I don't know if you you're aware that Qatar is hosting the World Cup this year, right? Or maybe you're not a big uh, uh, football fan, so it's huge. I was I was dreaming of staying until uh, the World Cup uh, just a couple of uh, months ago, but. I, I guess there are some changes in my plans and uh, we could speed it up a bit. So if I get accepted by this, uh, by next month, so yeah, I would have to move to Australia by July. Okay, well, best of luck with that. And thank you very much for coming and doing the speaking test. Yes, thank you too, Ellie. Really, I am an avid fan and really uh, keep up the great work. Salute. And I hope, yeah, your community will grow even more and yeah, more power. (laughs) Thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. (laughs) Bye then. (laughs) 